A un clic. En la Universidad Autónoma de Occidente somos wow. Somos calidad. Y tú eres la razón de este proceso de excelencia. Somos tecnología que garantiza la proyección de tus ideas. Somos innovación y emprendimiento. Y estamos felices de acompañarte en la creación de tu proyecto de vida. Somos inclusión. Sabemos que la educación es para todos. Una mezcla de ideas, cultura y sentimientos que nos dan una mirada, como la tuya. Somos responsables con el medio ambiente y así puedas impactar a tu entorno. Somos personas enamoradas de lo que hacemos. Somos como tú. Somos wow. Wow Speaks English, a radio program made by students for the world. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to Wow Speaks English. My name is Diana Toro, your host, and with me today I have the two powerful girls. <laughs> Susana, hello, Susie. Hi, Danita, how are you? Very good, glad to see you back. Thank you, same. And Juliana Velasco. Hi, how are you? Very good, thank you very much. I'm so much. happy to be here, it's my first time. Is it your first time? Yes, yeah, it's my first time. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I thought you were here before. No, this is my first time here. Susana uh, is your second time. Uh, the first time. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is everybody first time today? Yes. 
So welcome girls and welcome everybody watching us right now. Tell us in the comments, where are you connected from? What's your name? Uh, what university do, do you belong to? Or where are you in this moment? Are you in Cali or are you in another city? Juliana, you can tell us how people can start following us on social media. Okay, you can follow us as well speaks English in Instagram and Facebook and I'll send you to Very good. And if you are a WOW student and you want to be part of our team, we are looking for new members. So definitely you can send a direct message into our Instagram account as WOW Speaks English, or you can send me an email at ditoro at wow.edu.co. And Susie, what about the attendance? Uh, yes, Janita. Uh, don't forget to fill out the attendance form by clicking on the link located in the program's description. So guys, uh, without further wait, let's start with our new section named What Do You Think About It? Okay, so guys, since your opinion is so important to us, we decided to create a new section called What Do You Think About? Here, we want to know your opinion about different topics and we invite you to Use complete sentences when expressing your opinions and supporting your opinions with different reasons. So we have the first question of the day, Susie. Uh, yes, the first question is, have you ever considered moving to another country? Have you considered Canada and why? While you give us your answers in the chat, we want to know our, the opinions of our team. Uh, let's start with Huli. Yes, I've considered moving to another country before I considered the United States. But once I watched a video about the quality of life of Canada and I knew that I wanted to move there. Okay, cool. And you, Susana, have you ever considered moving to another country? Uh, yes, the first time it was between Canada and England. But right now I really want to move to England, actually. <laughs> yes. So myself, I have personally considered moving to Canada in a few times. Honestly, I don't know why I haven't finished the process. <laughs> But I guess because life happened, got married, maybe got loans and things that attach me to the country. But definitely it has been my number one choice uh, for different reasons and details that we're going to tell you about today. Some of the ones that I can tell you just... Um, very quickly are, for example, quality of life, like Juliana was, was yes. saying, um, maybe benefits, uh, opportunities to uh, study and become a legal worker and a resident. But I think that maybe something that has, has made me um, hesitate is the weather. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, yes. <laughs> I like hot weather. I like warm weather. Um, Cali is a perfect weather for me. I don't mm -hmm. mind the hot weather. But when I go to Bogota or when it's something like a, a city is really cold, I I cannot even get out of, of my house. So I don't know. Uh, what about you guys? How do you feel about cold weather? Uh, actually, yeah, the cold weather can be good for moments, but not all the time. Because, you know, for example, when you have to wake up early and you are going to take a shower and it's too cold, <laughs> I mean, that would be a problem, you know? So for that reason, yeah, the weather is really crucial at the moment. Well, thank God heaters exist so that you can warm up your water. <laughs> but if you don't have a heater, that's going to be a huge problem. Yes, maybe. Okay, and heating, heating system as well, because, you know, here, because it's really hot, we use air conditioning. But in cities where the weather is very cold, they use heaters. They have a heating system to warm up the whole house or the whole apartment. So yes. what about you? Are you into cold weather or warm weather? Personally, I love cold weather. Yes, I love snow and all the season, Christmas. <laughs> so you'll be fully, yes, fully satisfied and happy living in Canada. Yes, I will be happy. Perfect. So we want to read some of the comments that you're writing in this moment. Have you ever thought about moving to another country? Have Canada ever crossed your mind? So ha, Juan Betancourt says, hi, hello, Juan. Thank you for connecting. Javier Hurtado says, I love the cold weather. So Javi, Canada is for you. <laughs> What are you waiting for? 
Ana Milena says, well, I prefer the warm weather. Mm -hmm. Ana Milena, you're one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel Ruales says, warm weather is better. Yes. So, Caleños, we have warm <laughs> blood, with the exception of Juliana. <laughs> uh, and you, Melissa, also says that she likes the cold weather. But we want to repeat the question of the day. Susana, say the question of the day again so that our um, audience are able to send us their comments. Okay. Have you ever considered moving to another country? Have you considered Canada especially and why? So it could be moving for a short time, for example, for a course, for an English course, or it could be for, for I mean, permanently because you want maybe a different uh, life opportunity or you want to work in that country, or it could be for something academic, like going to do an undergraduate exchange or a postgraduate course or a postgraduate degree. So have you ever thought about moving to another country? This is what we would like you to answer in the comments right now. Meanwhile, while we wait for the answers, let's go into our second section, that is the tip talk. Many things happen every day at the U. Let's discuss them at Tip Talk. So welcome to our Tip Talk. In this section, we are going to give you the facts, statistics, and very interesting information regarding the topic. So today's topic is about immigrating to Canada and all the pros and cons and everything you need to know about the immigration process. It doesn't matter the purpose of your visit. You could be a student or you could be a worker. We're going to give you all the details here, right, Huli? Yes. Well, did you know that Canada just surpassed a record of newcomers last year, incredibly, and to support Canada's post-pandemic recovery and share a more prosperous future, the government of Canada just welcomed um, a target of welcoming 401,000 welcoming new residents in 2021. Oh my goodness. Yes. So that is a lot of people. Yes. I heard that during the pandemic, um, any kind of immigration process had stopped because airports and, ba and borders were closed. But this has recently reopened and the amount of people going is like, oh my God, they're all going at the same time. So the amount of people that have uh, move to this country in this past year has increased, I think, even double or triple compared to other years because they stopped for about a year, mm -hmm. a year and a half. Yes. yes. And to give you some more facts, um, going to another country, living there has requirements. It's not just like, okay, I get in the plane, mm -hmm. I get there and that's it. You do need to comply with some uh, requirements. For example, to apply for a Canadian immigrant visa, you must possess a technical or post-secondary education degree, have at least four years of work experience within the last 10 years, to be fluent in English or French, uh, the level of fluency depends on the kind of visa that you're asking for, and preferably between, to be between 20 and 35 years of age. Guys, I'm so sad. <laughs> yes, but, well, those are requirements. I'm not in that age range anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but those requirements are really demanding. I mean, but you don't have to worry about that because Latin Americans is a key market for Canadian immigration plans because Canada is looking for Latin American workers, professional technicians, especially from the oil industry and the areas of health, IT and construction, who have great possibilities to live there, to work in that country and stay as future citizens of it. Uh, what do you think about this, Juli? Oh my God, I think it is pretty important for Latin Americans to know about this, uh, if they're interested in immigrating to this amazing country. And in addition, American uh, Latin American people, professionals have high opportunities if they have academic preparation, if they have work experience, and also if they, um, and the command of Canadian languages like English first and French. Okay, 
And uh, I just want to clarify that the requirements that we give you at the beginning, they were if you were looking for a work visa, like some of the requirements for that kind of visa. Not necessarily you need to have those requirements if you're looking for a student one. We're going to give you more information later on. But uh, what if right now we read some of the comments, right, yes, Susanna? Yes, let's read some of them. Uh, Caroline, Caroline Sinistera tell us, I like to study in Canada. Yes, I mean, um, there are different offers in the study for international students. So uh, in a in few moments, we are going to talk about a, a company that is going to help us to give us information about this. Uh, Santiago Arango, Arango Sin Fuentes, nos di, they tell us, yes, I would like to study in Canada. I think that everyone wants to study there. Uh, Juliet, uh, tell us, I would like to go live in Canada, but the weather scares me. Yes, it's true, it's too cold there. You have to, like, you know, be always with the coats and all that. Uh, Oscar Julian, tell us, yes, I would like to travel and work in Canada for the opportunities. It's true. There are too many opportunities, especially from Latin American people. Uh, Javier Steven Hurtado, tell us, yes, I have considered moving to Canada because I have family there and my career has lots of opportunities there. Okay. Yes. Yes. So many of you or almost all of you have considered moving to Canada. I read some other comments that you have never thought about it, but that you are open to the idea. So maybe we can change your mind and convince you to go to Canada after this program. <laughs> Girls, you know something positive about cold weather? What? You can dress so fashionable. <laughs> yes. It's yes. true. With nice boots and coats and jackets and like, I don't know, different um, hats, gloves, scarves. So you can really mm -hmm. like look very yes. elegant. It's like yes. the magic of the seasons. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I dream myself of wearing like a white coat with some mm -hmm. like camel boots. Maybe when I visit Canada because my cousin lives there. So maybe I start, I'll start shopping for the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else do we have to say about Canada, Juli? Okay. Uh, did you know about these requirements? Because I've heard a lot of rumors. People think that this is so easy. So, have you? Did you know about these requirements? I follow different immigration accounts on Instagram, and everyone posts, okay, can or even the news. Canada is looking for so many workers. Canada is looking for students. Canada is looking for people, and you even get paid for moving there. Yes. <laughs> yes. But. I haven't I haven't met anyone that gets paid yet. <laughs> I have seen I have seen the people that have I have known the people that have moved there, but they have to pay for their expenses yes, and yes. for their education. Maybe the ones that get paid is because they go to very like cold weather places or mm -hmm. where the population is not very big. But I don't know. Have you guys ever met someone that has gotten paid for going to Canada? We want to read your <laughs> comments. So on the other hand, if any of you have advanced questions about the immigration to Canada, there is a company called Can Visas. C-A-N-V-I-S-A-S. -S. <laughs> the firm headed by Pedro Centeno is a consulting firm dedicated to professionally and effectively helping people interested in immigrating to Canada. Apart from advising you on immigration to Canada, you will also find a migration plan, the programs, and even emotional levels, such as the pain of an immigrant leaving his or her country. You know, people get homesick. Yes. Even yeah. though you do want to make this change in your life, you start missing the buñuelo, the empanada, <laughs> the tamales. Yeah. And, but you know what? If you're going to maybe a main city, Colombians are everywhere in the world. So for sure, you're going to find a Colombian <laughs> restaurant or a Colombian friend that can make arepas for you. So even if you're in China, I'm sure that you're going to find some Colombian products that are going to ease the feeling of being homesick. And Susana, what else do we have to remember today? Uh, well, once again, guys, don't forget to fill out the attendance form by clicking on the link located in the program's description. 
Uh, so now let's talk a little bit about the cost of living in this country. Since when emigrating, one asks oneself the question, how much does it cost to live in Canada? So first of all, if you're an international student in this country, would you have some advantages? Since with your student visa, you can work part-time while you are in class and full-time on vacation. So your expenses would be decreasing. Okay, however, if you're studying a language program, even if you, if you have a student visa, you will not be granted a work permit. So you should maybe consider uh, moving off majors. So it means that you will have to pay off everything that you are going to uh, spend in there. What do you think about this, guys? Did you know about this? Tell us in the comments. So now with respect to housing, I mean, there are many things that you must consider and within your budget before traveling, you must do this and prepare and plan. So you must have in mind, where are you planning to go? Because each of the cities have different levels of life in where some of them are cheaper and some of them are more expensive. Just imagine that we live in Cali and we go to Bogota. Rents are higher, but at the same time, salaries are higher. So something like that is going to happen there as well. Let me give you the facts. The cost is usually one of the highest um, in Canada. However, reaching between 35 to 50% of total expenses. So of your salary, you're going to spend at least 35% to 50% of your whole salary just paying for rent. Then in cities like Toronto and Vancouver, are, they are considered the highest cost of living uh, between 630 US dollars to 890 US dollars in average for uh, paying rent. Can you believe that guys? Was well, 630, 890. These are US dollars. These are not Canadian dollars. Yes. Okay. Well, it doesn't look that, it doesn't sound that high. Yes, I think that if you are maybe, your salary is higher. So you can spend the money. <laughs> but we were talking about a student that maybe has low income, this is going to be high. Maybe, but you can share your apartment, uh, maybe rent just uh, a room. A studio apartment? Yes. Okay. So what is a better option? Maybe if you have family members living there, it would be so much cheaper if you decide to stay with them. Yes, it's true. Or like Juliana just said, having roommates. Make sure you choose your roommates carefully. But having roommates is a very, very good way to share expenses. Right, Susie? Yes. Uh, now, uh, well, let's talk about something very essential, which is food. So that is really not too expensive in Canada. In general, the average of food expenses are between $220 and $295. And I'm going to give you a tip, and it is that it's best to consume fruits and vegetables of the season, as you will get them at a lower price at better and more fresh. Also, make smart purchases, such as buying your products in supermar supermarkets with better deals and lower prices. Okay, on the other hand, let's not forget about transportation, since one of the biggest advantages you, when you get when studying in Canada is the transportation. They have one of the best public transportation of the world. Okay, and yes. as well, did you know that due to the extension of the Canadian territory, it has um, very different cities and different cultures, climate, territory, and cost of living. However, the quality of all of them is very good. So studying or living in any of the cities is really worth it. For example, in the city with high cost of living, the salaries per hour, per profession are higher, of course, than in the other cities. So it compensates the cost of living with your income. Exactly. Yes. Okay, please guys remember to fill out the attendance from by the link on the link located in the program's description, description. And now with these interesting facts, let us know what you think about this in the comments. For the moment, Susie, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, at the moment, I think that, for example, in the case of the food, there is really like cheap, not too expensive. It could be really good because, I mean, the students there, the people needs to, you know, to fit in a better way. 
And of course, for example, in the incomings that we were talking about, that maybe for students can be a little high the level from the, you know, if they want to live in somewhere. But I think that, I mean, we are in a, we are like people that to, you know, to be with the others. So maybe living with them in the roommate's case, it would be a really good choice. Yes, definitely. Colombians don't like to live alone. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they, we stay with families as long as we can. And if we go um, maybe abroad and to live in, to another city, you want to have company, so you want roommates. Why don't we take some minutes to read some of the comments? Because people are giving their opinions, they're asking okay. questions, they're giving us their experiences. So we have here a comment from Javier Hurtado. He says, my best friend lives in Canada with his parents, so he doesn't need to pay too much for things. That's a really, really good thing. But he usually says the food in his province is not cheap. Let's also read the comment from Santiago Cortez. He says Canadian dollars are very expensive to the Colombian pesos. Well, Santiago, right now anything is more expensive than the <laughs> Colombian pesos. Oh the God. dollars, the euros, the American dollars. But if you do things like very well planned, I'm sure that you're going to make it. There's some scholarships and there are different options. So it is not impossible. Oscar Julian Perez also says, I heard that the cost of living is very expensive. Yes, you're absolutely right. It is one of the highest countries for the cost of living. And let's see if we have any other comments over there because we want to know your opinion. You have been part participating very actively during this topic. And what else do we have? Is the university expensive? Harrison, we're going to hold your question because later on today, we're going to have a very special guest that I'm sure is going to be able to answer that question for you. So, Susana, what else do we have planned for today? Well, now let's, let's pass with something very interesting. So, to confirm all the information given, our partners Daniela Castro and Laura Moore interview Daniel Rovira a chemist born in Cali who recently moved to Canada with his girlfriend. She's currently studying postgraduate career and he is working full time. So let's watch the interview. Hello everyone and welcome to this section. Today we have a special guest from Canada. His name is Daniel Rovira and he are going to tell us what it's like to live in Canada and some special aspects that we need to know about this amazing country. So, let's start. In what part of Canada do you live? Hi, my name is Daniel and I live in Montreal, the most popular city in the Canadian province of Quebec. I am from Colombia and I came to live in Montreal with my girlfriend uh, in April of this year, 2022. Do you think people earn enough money to cover its basic necessities? I think it depends on each individual necessities and conditions. In my case, I have a temporary work permit and I can exercise my profession as a pharmaceutical chemist. With this status, I earn enough money to cover a large majority of needs as housing and food expenses and transportation, but not all. I can especially mention that I have no access to public health system. That's because it is only for citizens and permanent residents. So I need to pay a private uh, health service to cover only emergencies. But you have a lot of benefits too. For example, if you have children, they can benefit from public education from age six to high school. Anyway, I think that as an immigrant newcomer, the money is not enough to cover all the basic necessities. And you need to evolve to a next status level of permanent resident or citizen for really cover all the basic necessities. Approximately, how much does the rent cost? The average rent for a one-bedroom apartment in Montreal is currently 1,200 Canadian dollars. 
and the variation of this cost will depend on the location and type of apartment. Closer to the city center and more modern, the more expensive it will be. What is the weather like? Is it difficult to adapt to the weather season? For now, I have no spring and winter, and I love it. This city has a full program of events and activities for any time of the year. I think that even in the worst weather conditions, the city offers to their population the way to adapt. Tell us, what do you think about Canadian food? Do you miss Colombian food? Uh, Canadian food is not easy to explain. They are in some way traditional and simple. Like a good chicken with potatoes. Um, they love uh, forest fruits and they use the sweet maple in everything. Certainly, I miss um, Colombian food, pan de bono, buñuelo, and chontaduro, of course. And finally, can you show us your usual transportation? giving us this useful information. Bye! Okay, thank you Daniel Rovira for sharing your personal experience and to Laura and Daniela for leading the interview. Now it's time to introduce our special guest. His name is Marlon Valencia. Uh, he is an English professor who currently lives and works in Canada. He can share first-hand information about this topic. Uh, we invite you guys to write questions for Marlon regarding immigrating and living in Canada through the comments. He will be answering them and at the end of the interview. Okay, welcome Marlon. Thank you for accepting and coming here to share about your experience. How are you today? I'm very good, thanks. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And um, I have to say that I'm going to share my own experience, both as an immigrant and uh, as a professor who talks to a lot of immigrants. Okay, how has been your stay in Colombia? It has been great, it has been fantastic. I haven't been here uh, for a while. So six years since last okay. uh, since I last came to Cali uh, and I had a chance to go to uh, the Caribbean so I spent some time in Santa Marta and Cartagena and now I'm here. Oh my God. You Amazing. do look a little tanned. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've been out in the sun for quite a while. <laughs> uh, so we have some interesting questions for you, Marlon. Here we go. The first one is, do I need to get in touch with someone who can help me to immigrate to Canada? That's a great question, and I'm going to say no. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, because all of the information is available on the Canadian government websites. You have to be very careful because when you look it up, if you look up the words immigration to Canada, the first three or perhaps four or five websites are going to be companies that are going to be more like consultants. And the websites look a lot like the Canadian government website. So there's two websites. One is for the federal government and the other one is uh, for the immigration system for the province of Quebec. Okay, thank you very much. Our second question is, what is the skill workers program? Because that is the one that is promoted the most. Mm. That's 
It's an excellent question. So if you go to the Canadian government website, you will find out all of the different options for immigration if you want to become a permanent resident and if you envision your life in Canada. And the skilled workers program attracts uh, skilled, I would say, professionals more than workers uh, because uh, the Canadian immigration system is a point system. So you get points for different things. You get points for your proficiency in the two official languages, which are English and French. You get points for your occupation and how um, how employable you could be based on that occupation. You get points for how young you are uh, and if you have a partner and how the, uh, how old the partner is and their profile as well, because that looks into the future of uh, how feasible or how possible is it going to be for that for these newcomers to have a family and uh, i guess create new canadians <laughs> marla i had a question about that because i was in shock it said that the preferred age range is from 25 to 35 i'm already 37 what happens to me do i have a chance <laughs> as i said is a point system so I get so, less points. <laughs> you, you may have less points in that area, but you you may get more points in another area. So it's a it's a math uh, exercise, pretty much. Got it. Okay, I I, I can yes. stay hopeful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what other questions do we have? Okay, if I am a professional and I'm considering immigrating to Canada, how soon do you think that will I be able? to practice my occupation, given that I'm highly proficient in one of the Canadian's uh, two official languages? Tough question to answer. <laughs> I think there's too many variables there. A lot of it has to do with what occupation it is that you do, okay. that you have, what your profession is. Um, one thing that we have to keep in mind about Canada is that all occupations are highly regulated and there's usually a professional governing body that will um, take care of the certification process and for that they will look at your credentials that means your education your experience uh, there's this um, expression that um, many canadian immigrants can relate to perhaps in a not so positive way canadian experience so okay. they ask you do you have canadian experience no? Well, <laughs> then that's an issue. And uh, I can tell you, in my case, uh, it's a little different. I have been highly privileged because I did my uh, most of my university in Canada. Uh, well, one master's in the U.S., one master's in Canada, a Ph.D. in Canada. So that's a bit of a different story but in in uh, my wife's case uh, she is uh, an internationally trained dentist and that was definitely a road of trials for her it was a lot of work to get certified and like it was this close to being impossible but she made it oh my god yes and can you describe the profile of the most wanted people to live in canada that's also a tough question. I'll tell you about the temporary workers program uh, that Canada has had for quite a while. So um, a lot of agricultural workers have been brought to uh, Ontario, let's say, in different provinces to work in the agricultural system, um, harvesting, whether it's grapes or any kind of veggies or, or edibles. And then the issue with that program, which is something that has been addressed more recently, is that those people are the kind of people that are needed in the country. However, they don't have uh, a BA, a master's, all of those qualifications that would give them points in the point system. Therefore, they were not eligible to apply to the skilled professionals stream, right? So it's like they were coming just for the summer and then bye-bye, they're shipped back to Mexico or Guatemala. So it's a, a bit contradictory because we get the cream of the crop pretty much from the entire world in terms of immigrants. But how many of those people are actually practicing their occupations? 
Well, that's a different thing. Like sometimes you may read headlines in the newspapers, like a uh, truck driver saved man's life uh, on the highway. And then you go and see, and that truck driver is a doctor from India. Mm -hmm. But he's driving mm -hmm. a truck because mm -hmm. he cannot practice. get certified and practice medicine. Okay, got it. Well, according to the B to B News, around 92% of Latinos were admitted as permanent residents, mostly from Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, and Venezuela. What do you think is the reason that most immigrants come from these countries? I will be pretty honest. I think that people just want to leave. And that's one of the big reasons. Um, just to tell you uh, on a personal anecdote, since I stepped in Colombia, in Cartagena, Santa Marta, many people I've met have told me I'm immigrating to Canada. I'm, I'm meeting someone. I'm talking to some sort of consultant. So I would say, from my experience working in the post-secondary education system, that um, we get a lot of immigrants from India, like from South Asia, uh, from China. And I'm not, that's not to say that the immigration from Latin America is um, a lot less, but it's just to show that um, this might be just the fact that a lot of people from different countries want to uh, look for a better standard of living, which is pretty understandable. Like. What can I say? I live there, right? Of course. Yes. <laughs> you made that decision. Yes. <laughs> and we have a last question, Okay. Liliana. And what do you think is the city with the most uh, job opportunities, opportunities in Canada? And what do you think are the most requested uh, professions? Okay, so I, would, I will definitely say that most people gravitate towards the large urban centers, like your cousin is in Montreal, Uh, and uh, that is definitely one of the cities that attracts the most uh, immigrants. But I would say that Ontario, and in particular Toronto, and not just Toronto, but what we call the GTA, which is the Greater Toronto Area, attracts a lot of people because of the employment possibilities. Um, now, the tough thing to say is that... Uh, Permanent residents and Canadian citizens uh, find, like, I, I guess they don't find it so easy to find a job. Okay. So that's one of the issues that a newcomer will encounter because if you if you think about it this way, the immigration system is bringing like the best people from every country. Then if everybody's the best, then how are you going to stand out to get that job if you don't have the Canadian experience? So it's it's tricky. It's really tricky. And I, regarding um, professions or occupations, I think that we have to look at uh, things uh, globally. So anything um, in IT could be uh, a good bet. Uh, anything related to, I guess, to the uh, automotive industry, uh, to the moving from fossil fuels into cleaner energies would be good, uh, but it, it's hard to say. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you for this valuable information, Marlon. Really, thank you so much. I think that we have learned a lot about how it's to live in Canada. So now let's check if the audience has written some additional questions for you. Uh, so, uh, Andri Adriana Melissa, tell us. My question is, industrial design is profitable in Canada? Hmm. That's, uh, I would say that uh, anything having to do with design is, could be profitable for sure, uh, but uh, it's highly competitive. Okay, and what other questions do we have? When it now says, how's the culture in Canada? Okay, so Canada is officially bilingual in English and French and multicultural by policy. So there's a policy of multiculturalism, I guess, that as Canadians, we're proud of uh, not being what they call the U.S., which is a melting pot. It's like you don't have to assimilate, but you have to be um, 
who you are and also embrace uh, Canadian culture and values, whatever that is, right? But uh, there's always a gray space uh, or a gray area in between. Uh, but I would say that uh, above all, you will find um, diversity. We welcome uh, diversity. And uh, we try to acknowledge the uh, wealth of experiences that um, students, in my case, as a university professor, and that newcomers bring and um, have to, what they can contribute to the country in general. I have always had the perception that Canadian people are very friendly in that they are um, open to differences from other people um, versus maybe some countries that they, they maybe discriminate uh, foreigners that is a more open country to people from around the world. Would you agree? I'd say yes, uh, and I would say that um, is much more visible and easier to experience in a big city like Toronto, which is one of the most diverse and multicultural cities in the world. But once you start driving north in Ontario, it will become less diverse, it will become uh, a bit trickier, and that's part of human nature, right? Like, um, I know, um, like, I, I just remember remember the experience uh, from a colleague who was working in a small town in northern Ontario, uh, where they were faced with uh, globalization, like, all of a sudden they got a bunch of students from China in that little white town in which they already had some frictions between the uh, francophone uh, Ontarians, the anglophone Ontarians and indigenous communities. And now they had the added um, component of having international students and they didn't know how to accommodate them uh, as well as uh, we would do in Toronto because that's our everyday life in Toronto, right? Got it. Okay, Marla, thank you so much for answering all these questions, for visiting us, and for accepting our invitation. We want to invite you to play a game. We have okay. a multiple choice game of five different questions that is going to test how much you were paying attention to all the information that we were giving you during the program today. So let's see what's the first question. We're going to give you the options. And we're going to tell you if you're answering right or wrong. Give your answers in the comments through the live transmission. So the first question is, which of the following fields have a high demand of immigrant workers in Canada? While we get the answers from our audience, we want to ask Marlon, what do you think? Can you help me read all the options down there? Of course. So which of the following fields have a high demand of immigrant workers in Canada? A, oil industry. B, health areas. C, IT. D, construction. E, all of the above. Which one would you choose? E. E, all of the above. We're giving you a hint. Maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong. What do we have over here? What do you think, Holly? What is the right answer? Do you want me to say the right answer? Not yet. Of what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I would say maybe information technology. Because it's like the yes. trendiest right now. Yes, in this moment. After the pandemic, IT just exploded from opportunities. Susie, what do you think? Which one is the right one? Um, well, I think that it could be health areas. Health you know? areas. Yes. Oh, due to the pandemic as well. Exactly. Yes, yes for that reason. We already have some answers. Wow, people are actively booming us with answers. They're saying Jesus is E, Santiago A, Caroline E, D. We have a mixed, um, <laughs> mixed opinions, but the answer is E, all of the above. So points for Martin. <laughs> Let's go to question number two. Okay. The second question is, how much does it cost to live in cities like Toronto and Vancouver? The first option is more than $600, B, $630 and um, $890, C, less than $700, and D, between $700 and $900. 
So I think we have said that it's kind of expensive. So I'm going to go with the highest number, which is D, 700 to 900 US dollars. And we're talking about per month, uh, expenses per month. And this is mostly maybe for students. Is a budget for students. What do you think, Marlon? Uh, yeah, I think it's um, accurate. I, I think it's, uh, it's high, yeah. Okay. And we already have some answers. People are booming us with answers. So we have Adriana saying D, Santiago Arango saying C. Most of you are saying D, 700 mm -hmm. US dollars to 900. But Juliana is going to tell us if we're right or wrong. The correct answer is B, $630 and $890. Oh my God, Marlon, <laughs> we got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Susana, what is okay. our third question? Now with the third question we have, what was the Canadian record of newcomers in 2021? We have A, 401,000 new permanent residents, 410,000 new permanent residents, and C, 411,000 new permanent residents. The numbers look very similar. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of changing a one in different yeah. places. <laughs> so what do you think, Marlon? I'm going to take a wild guess and say B. B, okay. What do you say, Juli? Um, I would say C. You're going with C, and I'm going yeah. with A, just so we have different <laughs> answers. And at least one of us gets it right. But Susana <laughs> is going to tell us. And most people here in the comments, they're saying B. Mm -hmm. Ana Sofia mm -hmm. Benitez is saying A. But most of you are saying B. So, Susie, which one is it? Okay, the correct answer is 401,000 new permanent residents. It's the A. <laughs> so, that means that Diego Velosa and Ana Sofia Benitez got it right. Congratulations, guys. And then we go to the question number four. And that is, this is an easy one. In what language you must be fluent to apply for a Canadian visa? The options are, Marlon, what are the options? Well, um, English, that's A, B, non, C, French, D, English and French. That was super easy. Yes. At least we master yes. one. <laughs> Do you speak French as well, Marlon? Uh, bien sûr. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the language of love, the sexiest language there is. <laughs> So, which one is it? Most people are saying D, English and French. Are they right? Uh, well, you could have just one of the two official languages and that should be enough. And it depends on where you're going, right? Uh, of course. What Canadian area? Yeah. Okay, super. But if you're fluent in both, I mean, you have more points. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> last and least, last question. Okay, and the last question is, how can a Latin American increase their opportunities in Canada? The first option is, have job offers in Canada prior to your trip, I'm sorry. B, know all Canadian history. C, having children under the age of 12. And D, having academic preparation and professional experience. So, for sure, you must be young. We have that <laughs> super clear today. <laughs> To have, um, to have a degree, to be fluent in English, but there are some things that are going to help you get more points. So which one is it? We are getting most of the answers saying D. Is that the right answer, Juli? Yes. The correct answer is D. Having academic preparation and professional experience. Okay. So we are finished with the get it right. We didn't get them all right. <laughs> However, <laughs> we got most of them, but you guys, very good job. You were paying attention and participating actively. And who is Susie is going to give us a last reminder. Yes, the last reminder, guys. Please remember to fill out the attendance form by clicking on the link located in the program's description. And this has been all for today. Thank you so much for staying tuned, for actively participating. Remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well as Speaks English. And there you're going to find 
uh, what's coming up uh, next uh, every every single week. Also, fun facts, different information. You can send us a message if you want to be part of our team or if you want to be a guest in our program. What about our next program, Huli? Okay, we invite you to connect next Thursday at the same time at 4 p.m. to our program about aliens. About aliens? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know anything about aliens, Marlon? I, I, I have to say that I'm happy that I'm not the invited guest in that program because <laughs> that means that I don't look like an alien to you. <laughs> but babe, maybe you look like an alien expert. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Encounters of the <laughs> encounters of the third world or third. Okay. Yeah. Third, third, yes, something like that. Okay, guys, <laughs> this has been everything for today. Thank you for connecting and Wow well, Speaks English. Do you? Bye bye, everybody. Welcome to Wow Speaks English. Wow Speaks English. A radio program made by students for the world. Thank you.